We're in the final week of COP24 and it's much busier. More delegates have arrived and ministers from around the world are flying in to lend their weight to the negotiations. As the political phase kicks off, ministers are going to have to grapple with the contentious issue of climate finance. Three years ago in Paris, all countries agreed to enhance actions to reduce emissions and adapt to climate change from the year 2020. Developing countries want certainty that they will receive financial support to do this, as was agreed. Promises has been there, but still, we don't have the funding available for least developing countries, small islands, that they can, that can allow them to implement their national determined contribution. Because every country in Africa, we sign up, we ratify it, but at the end of the day, we are waiting. Developing countries are looking for predictability when it comes to climate finance. They're saying we have these longer term climate targets, we're going to be implementing climate policies and adapting to climate change over many years, and we need to know that we are going to have the money that we require to actually reduce emissions and take those adaptation actions. That predictability is something that only the political uh, representatives of countries can provide. Richer donor countries are required to avail information on finance they have provided and mobilized and also start reporting on public money they intend to give down the line. It's not just about sending checks. The check alone won't do the trick. And sometimes in these negotiations, there's too much attention to the amounts of money that are flowing, which is important. You need to know something is flowing, but ultimately it's about the effects that the money that is spent is having. Settling questions on how and when information on finance is reported, as well as what counts as climate finance, would help to address a perennial issue around predictable financing. So there's a lot of uh, resistance in donor countries to providing a high level of predictability on future finance. And their argument is, well, how can we tell developing countries how much money we're going to give them six years from now when we may not even know what government will be in office in our country six years from now? I understand that question. It's a challenging one. But the reality is that countries make long-term financial commitments all the time. Discussions on finance, for the most part, are taking place out of sight and are likely to play out until the very end. The Katowice outcome has to be agreed as a package, and finance is one of its most important elements. Nothing's agreed until everything's agreed. And at this point, no one knows where this story ends. Ash Appleton, ISD Reporting Services, Katowice.